Sodium is incredibly important for athletes. That's because it's the main electrolyte that we lose in our sweat. And the reason it's the main electrolyte lost in sweat is because it's also the predominant electrolyte in extracellular fluid, which is where sweat is drawn from in the body. So whenever we sweat, we're gonna lose quite reasonable amounts of sodium. Sodium's role or roles in the body are quite many and varied. It's involved in the maintenance of fluid balance and crucially for athletes, the maintenance of blood volume. It's very important for nerve transmission, for muscle contraction and cognitive function. So basically, it's totally critical. And because we can't manufacture sodium in the body, we have to ingest it on a daily basis in order to stay functional and healthy. Now, most of the sodium that we intake on a daily basis comes in the form of NACL, or as you and I know it, good old table salt. And we tend to take salt for granted in our diets these days, but that's not always been, it's not always been the case that it's been easy to get hold of. We've made it widely available in the new developed world, but back in history, wars were fought over salt, and in fact, the Roman word salary derives from the word salt because Roman soldiers were paid in salt. That shows you how crucial it is for us as humans. Sweating is the main way that athletes lose sodium and fluids during activity. Because if we do a high amount of training or a high amount of competing, we sweat a lot, it means that our fluid and sodium needs can be vastly different from those that don't exercise. Obviously, we all know that we sweat different amounts. That's obvious when you look at people. Some people are absolutely dripping when they're training and competing. Other people stay relatively dry. But what's less well understood by a lot of folks is that we all lose different amounts of sodium in that sweat. Now, at Precision Hydration, we measure sweat sodium composition. The average value we see in human sweat is about 950 milligrams per litre, so kind of moderately salty. We have seen people losing as little as 200 milligrams per litre on one hand. On the other side, we've seen people losing 2,000 milligrams of sodium per litre of sweat. I myself am on that higher end, losing about 1,800 milligrams. And that sweat sodium composition, combined with the amount of sweating you do, so your sweat rate, the environment you're in, and the type of, um, the, the number of hours that you're training and competing for, are really what drive your sodium needs. So when it comes to sodium consumption, there's definitely no one size fits all model that works. Even though government guidelines in most countries recommend we restrict to two or 3,000 milligrams of sodium a day, that figure can be quite misleading for athletes who are undertaking a lot of endurance exercise. It's pretty hard to nail down the exact point at which sodium loss starts to impact performance for athletes negatively. But what we do know is that beyond a certain point, things start to go wrong when sufficient fluid and sodium are lost from the body through sweating. The big factor at play here is that your blood volume is gradually reduced because that's the pool from where sweat is drawn. And if we're not replacing adequate sodium with fluid, we don't maximize blood volume, so we don't keep our cardiovascular system running smoothly and performance starts to decrease. Some athletes also experience cramps and other signs that they're, they're running low on sodium, but they're not always universal. Up to a certain point, you can definitely just drink water to mitigate your sweat and fluid losses because sweat is proportionally a little bit more dilute in sodium than blood. But after a certain point, if we're not putting sodium back in with it, we can start to risk a condition called hyponatremia, which is where sodium levels in the blood get diluted, and this is exacerbated by sweat sodium losses, and hyponatremia can be extremely problematic for athletes. In extreme cases, it can even lead to seizures, coma, and death. Because sweat and sodium losses are so individual, any kind of generic guidelines should be viewed with a bit of suspicion because there's no such thing as a one size fits all answer to this problem. There are two main inputs to look at though when you're starting to try and figure out what your needs as an athlete are gonna be. The first one is the total amount that you sweat. So that's gonna be driven by how long are the activities that you're doing, what your sweat rate's like, and quite a bit by the environmental conditions and the clothing that you wear. If it's very hot, 
if you've got a high sweat rate and you're going for hours and hours, it's pretty obvious that your sweat rate is going to be higher, your total sweat volume loss is going to be higher, and therefore your net sodium loss is going to be higher than on a cooler day or doing something shorter. If you can couple that with information about whether you've got a low, medium, high or very high amount of salt in your sweat or sodium in your sweat, then you can really start to categorise yourself as someone whose needs for fluid and sodium will be low, moderate, high or very high. That's when you start to get into the nitty gritty of unpicking what the, the best replacement strategy is going to be for you. And on the Precision Hydration website we've got plenty of tools like an online sweat test, we've got information about our physical sweat tests and information about the level of sodium in our products to help you really nail that down and get it just right for your own situation.